All right, so let's jump right into this video today because this is some good, valuable information that a lot of people who are traders want to really know. And the million dollar question is always this, how much money do I need to really start trading the future markets with? Okay, so you're interested in growing a small account, all right? And you want to know, is $400 enough? Is $500 enough? Is $2,000 enough? Everybody has various amounts they ask that when asking this question um, because some may have a little more than others to start with, but it's all everybody wants to get into the market of trading futures. They don't know which markets to trade. They're unsure of the amount of money they're going to need or the capital they're going to need or the various ways in which they can start. They want to know what does it take to get into this market? What should they know? What should they educate themselves on? Which uh, time period should they trade? Um, you know, what kind of strategy? Uh, how much they should, uh, you know, how many lots should they trade? Or contracts they trade? How much should they leverage? All those different things. Which markets? We're going to talk about that today. So sit tight. I have a beautiful layout here that we're going to talk about. We're going to touch on each one of these topics here. This is a flow chart. And, you know, starting off with this, the idea you want to trade futures and which asset class or market should or which particular future um, asset should I actually get into trading? I trade indices. So sit tight. We're going to this is going to be, you know, just a, a full on video to kind of give you a rundown. Um, we're not going to go into like spend hours upon hours into every little detail. But, I mean, there are some other things, of course, that you really probably uh, may want to know. But this here is the, the gist. This is the nutshell. This should put you on the right path to really put you, point you in the right direction, um, you know, if you're really inter interested in trading the future. So let's talk about this right now. So when it comes to futures, you should know by now that there are, you know, various asset uh, markets or classes that you can that you can actually trade i mean you can trade the indices like i do um i primarily focus on the es futures i haven't really done much trading on that and this video is not about that this this quarter because it's been kind of moving kind of slow um really haven't seen there's been a couple opportunities since the in the first quarter but also trade the nasdaq 100 futures uh you have the the russell you have the dow so if you're interested and there's other markets too when it comes to um you know, uh, indices or, or markets you can uh, uh, trade, even in the, the, gl the global or the foreign aspect. Um, you have like the, the DAX, you could trade that. There are uh, Asian markets that you can trade um, a as well. So, you know, it just depends on what you're really interested in, in trading, um, you know, and which markets, U.S. markets, some of the foreign markets, when it, you know, uh, pertaining to, uh, some of the stock indices in a sense. But anyways, outside of that, you also have commodities, okay? A various range of commodities that you can actually trade. You have currencies, yes, just like in the Forex markets. Uh, we have currencies in which we can trade uh, here in the future markets, okay? You have the financials. You can trade the bonds, you know, the 30-year, the 10-year, uh, five. So there are different markets or assets classes that uh, that you can trade right here within um, futures. So it just depends on what you want to trade. I personally prefer the indices or in the, uh, that I, you know indices. So that's what I trade daily here on this channel here. So if you come across and uh, you're interested in trading the Nasdaq 100 or possibly the uh, the ES, the mini S and P 500 or the micro versions, this is the channel because that's what I primarily focus on and tr and uh, uh, surround myself in is the indices. Okay, but what I want to tell you, the strategy and how I trade here on this channel, you can trade it. It's, it's, it's universal and you can trade it no matter the market. I'm talking about even Forex if you want to, even options. But I know with the options, there, you know, there's other things and um, moving pieces that you have to know, uh, like theta, gamma, and, you know, that time decay stuff. And there's other things you need to really pay close attention to when it comes to options. All right. But yes, I mean, there's so many variety of, of things you can trade right here trading futures okay now the next uh question that people always ask me is um what do i really need to know you know i'm interested how do i educate myself or what pieces of education or components should i really focus on let me stop and tell you right now because i talk about this heavily across the channel on various videos on just about every video here in the channel listen to what i'm going to say when it comes to this piece right here core concept of education two things stick out and are the most important uh, core elements to what you're going to need to know. And that is market structure and price action. 
Now, you should know this in a sense. You know, I know that a lot of people are new to, to trading and, you know, they may be coming over just thinking that trading is all about trading stocks. And then they hear the word futures and then, you know, someone may have, you know, said it out loud or, or whispered it into their ear and then they're, they're doing their homework online about futures. No matter the market you trade, you need to know how that market is moving, okay? What is the structure? Is it trading to the upside, trading to the downside? Are we moving sideways, okay? And I'm just going to show you just a quick example of what I'm talking about when it comes to, to structure. Uh, but you also need to know price action. Price action is just the, you know, if we are, for example, I'm marketing zones. I trade supply and demand. It's part of the strategy how I trade. Price action is the movement of price as is we say, for example, returning, pulling back, or retracing back to that zone. What's happening? Is the market, as it's moving higher, breaking back into, say, a swing area where there was a supply setup or supply zone up, and it's making higher highs and higher lows? And has it broke through areas or levels retrace, as it's retracing back to that supply zone? Or in reverse, if we're looking at a, at a demand zone. So I'm going to show you an example of what I'm talking about when, I, when, when it comes to structure, because structure is everything. If you can master market structure, I'm going to say this again, if you can master market structure and are able to read price action, honestly speaking, I'm going to tell you right now, you don't need anything else. You don't need indicators on your chart. You can become a pure price action trader and make it and be successful in in, in, in the trading world. I'm going to say that right now, okay? So let's talk about, I'm going to show you an example of market structure now. Now, when it comes to, to market structure, all we're looking for is just the ebbs and flows. Is the market breaking structure to the upside or is it moving lower and breaking structure to the downside? And how to really, you know, kind of determine the trend and if, if there's a reversal. How I go about looking for reversals, if there's going to be one, we see one in the market, is basically if I see a structural break. Say, for instance, the market is trending to the downside and a structural break to the upside, then my mind will start to shift to start looking for possibly uh, positions to go long because we just broke structure to the upside. So look, pay close attention here because, look, this is the reason why if you, I tell people all the time, start with naked charts, master a naked chart because if you can do that, then you're more than on your way to you know becoming successful. Uh, you don't need indicators. The only thing I really kind of use is, is volume profile. Now I'm looking at a higher base chart because I want to show you and kind of educate you on looking and getting um, used to using uh, higher base charts or higher time frame charts because these are the ones where you possibly more than likely going to want to mark your, your, your zones. If you trade supply and demand, marking your high your higher time frame or higher base supply zones or higher time frame, or, or, excuse me, a lower base or lower time frame um, um, demand zones, okay? So look. All we're doing when it comes to structure um, is this right here. Is we're looking at the market to see, and we're just going to go over the last few days. Is it moving? Where are the flows of the market to the downside or to the upside? And typically what I like to do is, it's easy. I don't trade trend lines, but I'll take it like a trend channel. And I'll just kind of go from a high, just kind of like this right here to see, okay, are we still in a channel to the downside? If we are, that's a very simple way or tool to use. Uh, especially using Ninja Trader platform uh, to use. Again, I'm not. I'm gonna say this now. I'm not affiliated with Ninja Trader in any kind of way, uh, nor do I receive any type of you know commissions or anything. I'm just simply letting you know that that's the, the platform that I trade. There are tons of other tr uh, future trading platforms out there, um, and I'm gonna show you a broker that I use. Again, I'm not affiliated with them because there are other brokers out there that I've mentioned in, in a prior video. I talked about um, a in a video about some of the best brokers to use or top brokers to use when it comes to trading futures, but it's your choice to choose. What I'll do at the end of this video, if you watch it through, there will be an end cap. At the end cap of the video, you'll see a, um, this video here, you'll see a caption to where you can click on it and watch a video where I talk about um, some of the future brokers that you may possibly be interested in using, depending on the, you know, also depending on the trading platform you're interested in using, because certain brokers allow or, or um, allow you to incorporate or use a uh, certain pl uh, platform. So, you know, you, you want to marry up that broker and that platform together. So, again, with when it comes to uh, market structure, and we'll cover that at the end, but when it comes to market structure, I'm, I'm talking about the flows of the market. So what I just see simply happening here is that the market is made a low, pull back, lower high, lower low, okay? Lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Each time it's doing that, it's breaking structure to the downside, then I want to really start to entertain to just the possibilities of looking for short opportunities until I see a structural break back to the upside, as if 
for example, we have one now moving to the upside here. So if we're looking at, say, the 13th, the 14th, the 15th, uh, which was last Friday, and now we're moving into, what, the 18th today. So now we have where we can see where the market is breaking structure to the upside. And again, all you really have to do is just use a channel to kind of determine. It's a little bit you know, more than this, just doing this. But we can see the market is moving higher to the upside now. Now, uh, and the way that I look for structural breaks, in a sense, is like I see a low here, lower high, lower low. Okay, the market pulled back significantly, and then it broke structure to the downside. All right? So when I see that right there, we broke structure to the downside, meaning we broke below 18,028. We're still bearish to me until I see the market come back and break above 170. Once it breaks above, uh, for example, excuse me, 170, then I'm definitely interested in looking for long opportunities. That's why, for example, I have this area of demand uh, right here that I marked up right here. This is a beautiful trade area to which you could have taken a trade from if you would have marked it off of your higher time frame zone and then looking down at the lower time frame to look for a specific play by play or steps to unfold and i'm going to talk about that in the last part when we get down to a lower portion of the diagram that i was showing you about a strategy that i use i'll go over that uh just a quick you know synopsis of how i look for my trade setups and we'll use this as a reference or example because it's real time and it happened today but again we got a structural break above this area right here once i see a structure break above this 170 area but we broke above it right here and then it starts to make higher highs and higher lows breaking to the upside then i know that i need to be start looking for long positions that's all we're doing when it comes to market structure is looking for and identifying key areas of structural breaks to the, either to the upside continuously or to the downside so if we have it where it's continuously breaking structure to the upside and then we start to see where it breaks an area of structure below to the downside then we still start looking for longs in this case here is a classic a classic example we're breaking structure to the downside here, but when we see a major or a significant area of structure being broken back to the upside above 170, then I know that I need to start again looking for long positions going long. And so use your higher base or higher time frame charts to let you know based on when you see structure breaks how you should be trading short or long in this case here we broke structure above 170 now i'm looking for longs when did we break that area structure we broke it early part of this morning prior to the market opening so i would you know just be looking for long opportunities and look if you see right here what happened here uh around uh close to shortly after the market around 10 o'clock we just broke another area structure right here to the upside so if we broke structure to the upside would this be a an area of interest right here uh, back down here at 311 or 312, of course it would be because there is a demand zone, which I'm going to go ahead and mark this now. I'm just telling you this now. There's a demand zone resting right here. What do I mean by demand or supply? That's just aggressive areas of buying or selling when the market had broke an area st structure. We broke this area here at 360 or 361, breaking it to the upside. This is a key area of demand resting right here. Now, would this be a key area of demand? Yeah, we just saw it bounce right here. So this is a demand area here. Again, I'm marking these zones off of my higher base chart, and I recommend you doing the same off of a higher time frame or a higher base chart. Mark those zones accordingly because when the market comes back to those areas off of a higher base or higher time frame chart, especially in this case here where we have aggressive buying boom what happened here when it got back here because we're play, taking a play off of the the higher time frame chart the move is going to be more impactful to the upside when we're, and we're looking for to go longs for one already so it broke structure here at 160 look what happened it came back to this demand zone is it's bouncing off of it the move is going to be more impactful because we're moving back to a higher time frame or higher base chart this is why higher base charts or higher time frame charts are just they carry so much weight because you can look for bigger moves if you're marking zones off of a higher base or higher time frame chart. Just want to you know, throw that out there to you. All right, so now let's move on uh, to the next part. All right, so when it comes to price action, just want to throw that out there too. That's a significant thing that you want or, or key component to trading that you want to uh, definitely learn. All that is is we're marking zones, right? Okay, we just talked about structure. If we retrace back to say this area right here, okay? We want to pay close attention to the swings that the market is making as it's retracing back to our zone, okay? Because each one of those swings could could then be uh, classified as areas of resistance where the market could bounce, meaning it could come back here, test areas above these areas of resistance, and then break lower, okay? So you have to pay close attention to what's taking place and unfolding as the market is pulling back to a zone. So two key things you really want to learn is market structure and price action. You master those two things, then you're 90% on the way of being there when it comes to the educational components 
uh, parts or the co core concepts that you need to really master. Market structure and price action are everything to trading. I'm telling you, if you can master those, you do not need any specific indicators. Where all you need is a good strategy to trade, understand the flow of the market, and you are on your way to becoming successful. Now let's move on. The next part that I want to talk about, we're going to focus on here is the create a solid trading plan. Okay, trading plans are personal. They're specific to each individual. I highly advise you to create your own specific trading plan for you. Don't copy anyone else's trading plan. Make one, design one that is good for your purposes only. Everybody trades differently. People trade different sessions. They trade different time periods or time blocks. Um, and you know, you definitely will also want to incorporate a strategy in doing so. But let's talk about the trading plan uh, in reference to a session in Tom Block. First of all, let's talk about having a trading plan at all. Trading plans are, you know, the step by step, the guidelines, the playbook in which you are sticking to your rules. Okay, I should say that uh, to what you're going to adhere to on a daily basis when you are looking to get into the market and start trading. So make sure you stick to that. There's, I've been seeing, I've seen so many people that always, or, or, or people that come to me and, and say, man, I took a trade today and I went against my plan. Okay, meaning they went against their trading plan and because they did so, they got smacked on the hand, they got burnt and possibly even blown your account or their accounts, okay? I've never personally blown account, an account. I have taken losses, yes, when I first started, and but because I, I was only trading with small amounts of money, okay, and I was very frugal because uh, I was penny pinching, meaning I, I I wasn't allowing the market to come back against me because I was very scared and I, I chick chickened out of a lot of trades, so I would close my positions very early. I became more successful over time in learning things, meaning I thought I knew market structure, say for example, at my, at the beginning. That was I'm gonna tell you right now was my biggest downfall because people always ask me. What do you find was your biggest downfall? Just not being able to read the market, not being able to understand the flow, not being able to understand which way I should be trading. That is where I um, took my, 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 I guess my, had the biggest problems, took the biggest losses in a sense. Um, even though my losses were very minimal, I'm just saying I lost money because I didn't, I wasn't able to read the uh, market structure and price action. That's why those two things, as you can see right here, are number one on the list when it comes to this, this chart here. Um, but yes, creating a solid plan, you want to never deviate from that. Once you have devised, you understand market structure, you understand price action, you devise a solid trading plan, stick with that. I'll tell people this all, all the time. Stick to the rules, okay? Because if you are consistent in doing so, that's how you're going to gain profits consistently over time, over time, over time, okay? So when it comes to sessions and there's three in which you can trade futures, you have of course, the U.S. session, which most traders trade, you have the Asian session, which is typically um, Eastern time, so that kicks off around 6 p.m. Eastern time, and then you have the London session, session, which kicks off around 3 a.m. in the morning Eastern time. Now, I don't trade, definitely not the London session, which to me, if I was to trade um, outside of the U.S. and had opportunity where I could be up, it would be the London session because there's more volume, I'm going to say this, in the London session uh, I'm not saying more than the U.S. session because it's not, but there's more than the Asian session is what I'm going to say. Now, have I ever or do I ever trade the Asian session? Yeah, if I see a nice setup, because, I mean, trading is really all about looking for, you know, tackling the market with the strategy you have in the right setup for one, okay? I trade supply and demand, so I have a strategy surrounding around a, 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 a certain, you know, looking for setups that I'm looking for, and, but there's a game plan, there's a step-by-step -step series that I'm looking for to unfold when it comes to, to my strategy, Okay. Um, but anyways, what I'm getting back into is the session in which you're looking to trade. Now, if, a lot of people say that they can't catch the U.S. session because of where they, they live at globally, you know, overseas somewhere, wherever the case is, or maybe they, their, their work schedule doesn't allow them to permit them to allow them to actually, uh, trade the U.S. session. Okay. I, I don't know. Maybe you work a third shift, uh, well, maybe, you know, and you're sleeping during the time you get home, you sleep. So maybe you're looking, well, you can still t trade a U.S. session, but all I'm saying is, is that, According to your personal life and, and the schedule you have, you may not be able to trade the U.S. session. So you have the opportunity to trade the Asian session. Session. Maybe you can trade the London session, depending on where you're at globally. You know, people who are uh, overseas in Europe love to trade the, the London session. Maybe in, in in Germany, you know, or or in London, or somewhere in in that realm over there. Um, you know, when it comes to uh, that particular side of the world. 
Okay, so you could trade, say, for example, the DAX, you know, if you, if you choose to. I'm just throwing, you know, different time or, or, or letting you know that there's opportunity around the clock, okay? The future markets are open 23 hours a day. They're only closed one hour for maintenance. That's the beauty about trading futures. That's five days a week. They're not open seven days a week. Close on the weekends, okay? So you get your downtime, right, on the weekends. So pick a good time for you to trade. When it comes to the U.S. session, because I primarily trade that, I'm going to tell you, I love to trade. I look for opportunities pre-market. Uh, mostly, excuse me, um, 7.30 to roughly 9, sometimes before 9. But when there is major news events, please uh, do yourself a, a favor and pick up or or, or 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 download or save a economic calendar, okay? What that is, is just uh, it allows you to see the major calendar events which are going to possibly affect the, the markets. How they, how, how they, you know, what, when you see a major news event happen, okay, FOMC, CPI, um, you know, there's a variety of, of, of other ones out there, um, uh, payrolls, things of that nature, non-farm payrolls. They have significant impact on the markets and stay out of the markets when you see high impact or even medium impact news because they can affect the market where it starts to get volatile and you don't want to be caught up in that. Typically, that's around 8.30 in the morning is where we have a lot of news events. So I try to stay out of the market, you know, around 8.30. Definitely, I don't trade 8.30. And I, another thing I don't do is trade at 9.30 in the morning when the U.S. session opens because it's like a bunch of of order is just packed in and, and, and just just bulging just waiting for the market to open and boom everything explodes don't get caught up in a lot of volatility because you know the market can shoot up in your direction one way and then shoot down and you lose some money uh, especially if you're not trading with the stop so uh time blocks make sure you have specific or key time time blocks people always ask me okay how much time should i give myself in trading trading a day that's the beauty about trading as well. You can trade one hour, two hours. I say two hours is probably the mark for me as far as cap, uh, because you should be able to capitalize definitely within the the, the the morning session. Now, if you can't trade in the in the morning session, then I will talk, I'll talk about the PM session. You know, here when it comes to being in the states here in the U.S. And maybe if you're, if you're globally, all you have to do is just kind of monitor to see, okay, I'm, I'm here, I'm 12 hours ahead, so I, I need to be prepared if I want to trade the U.S. session. So you have to kind of do some homework to see, you know, and understand certain time zones uh, if you're globally to where you can trade um, certain markets, say the U.S. session here, when it's open and the, the time frames or which are the best opportunities or kick off the best opportunities. 7.30 to roughly... You know, um, I'll say around nine, uh, you know, definitely if we don't have any news now at 830 in the morning, but it's a good opportunity to to trade. And then after that, when the market opens, I give myself at least 20, 30 minutes, somewhere around 10 o'clock. I'll start looking at the market again. I don't want to typically trade within that first half an hour after the market opens at 930 Eastern. Uh, so for around about 10 to 1130, you can shut it down to 1130. You got to think about getting closer to lunchtime. Things get slower, not, not, not as much volume in the market. And if you're interested in trading the afternoon session, um, anywhere at the one o'clock, two to three is a good time frame, you know, to, to, to kind of trade. Um, so typically overall, what I'm saying is one, an hour and a half to two hours a day max. You, I wouldn't recommend sitting in front of the charts all day long. Because the more that you start to entertain the market and and sitting here jumping in and jumping out of trades, you're going to end up getting yourself into a bad situation to where you're going to lose money. So don't spend crazy amounts of time just sitting in front of the charts all day long unless you want to. But I'm just saying, uh, the more you uh, stay out of the markets, meaning taking minimal trades, maybe just one, two, three setups a day, you know, one and done sometimes, depending on how your, your, your trading style and the strategy you're using. It's all you really need, I'm be honest with you, because the more you spend time in these markets on a daily basis, jumping in and out of the trades, um, I'm be honest with you, then you're taking on additional risk. Look for high probability, good setups. And I talk about that in so many videos here on the channel about how I trade and look for high probability setups and the strategy and what I, and, and what I uh, trade and, and how it unfolds, okay? So if you want to watch some of those videos, just get pen and pad, take notes, okay? We have had very successful, we have had many, many successful people who are a part of the channel that have went on, you know, after kind of graduating in the sense of learning the strategy, put their own little twist on it and moved on because they're consistent today making money regardless if they've traded prop firms and taking money from and withdrawn and to start their own personal accounts 
uh, and things of that nature, or just made money based on using their own capital. Now, when it comes to the strategy part of things, uh, I know people trade various strategies out here, and I'm not one to tell anyone what to trade and how to trade um, in reference to a strategy. You trade what works for you. I always, I talk about this. You hear me mention it in many videos. Whatever is consistent for you, whatever you're profitable in doing, stick with that strategy. Where I see people make the biggest mistakes is where they deviate and move over to trying something new all the time. And then it's like either they forget the great way of how they were making money and being consistent because now they're interested in seeing something else or they're trying to merge too many things together and they just start to butt up. Um, so don't do that. Trading should be simple, okay? Trading is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, and I'm sure most uh, traders will attest it is. But what I'm trying to tell you is this right here. Make your trading simple. That's why I talk about naked charts and pure price action. To me, it's the best way to trade, okay? But again, I'm not here to tell anyone how to actually trade. The strategy and how I trade surrounds all around supply and demand. I'll just give you a quick example in reference to what I talked about a short minute ago uh, uh, about to, in today's market what took place at that demand zone. So let's take a look now. Now remember what I talked about structure, market structure at the beginning of this video. Look, we we, we were moving to the downside of record structure, right? And I told you we broke structure above here at what, 171 area? So once we've done that or did that, I'm starting to look for uh, long positions, but you know, I wanted to look for areas where the market's pulling back to key areas of demand. That's what it's about. Marking the zones off of a higher base chart when the market is moving in a certain direction strong. Okay, so it started moving to the upside and we started getting these swings here. That's aggressive sell, I mean, excuse me, aggressive buying to the upside, pulling back. So it's basically making, you know, smaller, higher highs and higher lows on a higher base chart or higher time frame chart. I trade range based charts. You could trade supply and demand no matter, you know, the charts, really, to be honest with you, tick, volume, uh, time base, whatever it is. But one thing I'm gonna tell you now, people always ask me, well, I, I trade time-based charts, so how, uh, um, what charts would be uh, comparable or comparable to um, the range when I use time? I don't know, guys. I don't trade time-based or tick-based or volume-based. I strictly trade the range-based charts and have been doing so since for the beginning because that's what's been working for me, and that's why I talk about consistency, trading what works for you. Okay, so the market's moving higher here as we can see this. Now, back at these areas, yes, we have beautiful areas of, of demand. We have a demand zone here. Um, let me see here. We have a demand zone resting right here as well. You say, what is demand? Aggressive areas of buying. And you have to understand, you know, who's driving the markets as well. Okay, that's another topic, but I just want to throw it out there. The banks and institutions, please do your homework to understand. As retail traders, we do not put a dent in the market it's the bank and the institutions that do and we want to trade their coattail grab on look for opportunities meaning the footprints they make in the market and waiting for those beautiful pullbacks to those areas where they've made um a game playing uh move at okay so let's say if you know the market's moving higher here again this would be a demand zone here uh moving to the upside and we have this beautiful area of demand this is the one i was talking about right here we broke structure again above this area at 321 and a half this is a beautiful area of demand. I'll blow it up some off my higher base chart. Aggressive buying. Okay. So we broke structure off this swing to the upside, and that structure aided, I mean, excuse me, that swing aided or that demand area aided in this area of, of breaking above 322, 323. All right. So again, remember what I told you about patience is key. Patience is definitely key. I talk about that. So the market pulls back to this area of the zone right here. Now, when it does that, I do not immediately jump into a trade. What I love to do is move down to a lower base chart because of the fact is I'm dealing with a higher base or higher time frame uh, zone. Okay, I like to move down to get into a more precise entry point. So when I, which, which will help you also eliminate drawdown. Okay, because when you start taking trades off of a higher base or higher time frame chart, even though they could be key areas of supply and demand. The market can have big swings, it can have big moves, and it can scare a lot of people who don't have the capital to really weather the storm to get out of a trade. And it's like, I see this and I hear this time and time again. They've taken trades off of a higher base or higher time frame chart. The market comes back against them. They get scared because they, they haven't spent enough time experiencing the market. They jump out of a trade, they close the positions, they've lost money, and then the market turns back around and moves in, in the direction. This is the reason why I talk about mark zones off of a higher base chart but allow the market once it gets back to a zone allow yourself to look for over on a smaller time frame or or, or, or time based i mean excuse me a uh, lower base chart to look for a setup 
accordingly based on it pulling back to your key zone. This is a demand zone. Once we get back here, I'm moving down to a lower base range chart. So I'm gonna talk about that, that now. Let's move down and I'm gonna show you what I look for right quick in the strategy. All right, so we see the market. This box right here that I have drawn, this is the higher base zone that I marked off of my 60 range chart. So on my lower base chart, all I'm doing now is that I'm, I'm, I'm to get into a more precise entry point. I'm looking for a small like structural break, okay? And there being even a small area of demand, which is I like to see untested zones, okay? Ones that where there's a gap back at the in this case here we're trading a demand zone. So you know when we're in this area here, the price the market made a low right here, okay? And we see that it broke up. It broke above this swing, say right here, okay? So that's the indication I mean possibly the market wants to look higher. But I haven't really gotten a, a, a good structural break, you know, set up. Okay. So I see where it broke up. Okay. We got a break above this area here, but I'm looking for a, a structural break to occur after that. What we've seen where the market is, um, have an interest, making interest to go to, to push, to push higher. So we made this low here. It breaks above this area here. Let's say at 302, it pulls back. Now this is a, like a little zipper here, but there's a small little uh, structural break right here. If you can really pay close attention to the, uh, what took place here. I mean, sometimes I tell people to use a line chart if you can't really see what took place. All right. So I'm going to go to my line chart. You see how we pushed down here, pull back and broke lower. Then we broke above here. So the market is setting itself up for a small little structural break right here back to the upside. Now, again, we are bullish on the higher base chart. Okay. We just broke above an area structure here. So this tells me that they're possibly wanting to try to still continue running to the upside. And then when I see this right here, the first step, it breaks a small area structure to the upside, breaking this level here, pulls back, and then we get a breaker structure set up here on the lower base 12 range chart, which is my entry chart. Again, I'm looking for the most precise entry point. So it makes a small little area right here, it breaks high here, comes back, okay? Then it breaks structure to the upside right here. It breaks right above 292, right here. Look at here, there is aggressive buying to the upside. That's a demand area. So I'm going to mark that small little zone there off of my lower time frame. So all we're basically doing is we marked a higher base chart demand zone, and then I'm going to mark a higher base chart demand zone, excuse me, a lower base chart demand zone. Okay, rectangle. So right here, because I have aggressive buying off of this small little break of structure, moving to the upside. Why is it aggressive buying? Look at all these small little, I mean, look at these green candles right here. The, and it's untested, so when the market gets back to the zone, the last part of the strategy we'll look for is the break and close of a candle to the upside. And lots of times I'll get in aggressive if I personally see where the market has come right back to that demand zone, okay? And it wicks away from it real quick and closes to the upside with a bullish candle. Typically, I'll get in right here at 293, okay? Now, it's safe if you're more conservative to get in here, say, at uh, 296 or 297 because we're waiting for the break and close of a candle above the last bearish candle to the downside. So whatever bullish candle that closes above it, we're looking. So 297 would be a good conservative area to get into the market. But because I'm aggressive, I'll get in here at 293. If you look what took place as well, we got a break of structure back inside of the higher base, what? The higher base uh, demand zone as well. So we're getting in at the lowest point, okay? This is where I, you hear me talk about in videos, buying at discounted areas and selling at you know, at, at, at a higher area. So I'm buying where the price is cheaper and I'm wanting to get into the market. And this is how I perfect and in getting into more precise entry points. So you get into a trade right here and then it runs up. You say, okay, well, where are you gauging for the market to go back up to? Well, if you follow price action and what took place right here, I'm going to definitely be looking for an opportunity to run it back up to the highs and fill in any imbalances back to the upside. So you get into this trade right here, exactly uh, what took place here, okay? All right, and you run it all the way back up to uh, at least up to this area here around 346. And as you can see, the market did exactly that. It goes all the way up there. Uh, what did I say? 96? Yeah, uh, excuse me, 46, not 96. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, 46, so that's around this area, um, right in this area right here. So we go back up there and we test that high from the higher base chart. So the strategy is again marking a higher base chart in the supplier demand zone. In this case here, it was a demand zone. Marking that, waiting for the market to come back to it, looking at price action accordingly as well. And then we just move down to our lower base chart. This was the zone right here. Move down to a lower base chart, looking for a 
set up to take place, like I said, a break of structure uh, to the upside there with a key uh, area of demand and wait for the market to come back now to the demand zone on the lower base chart. Once we get the break and close of the candle above, we go long, okay? But we're trying to get into a trade at the at the best discounted or cheapest area where there's a break of structure that forms beautifully off of the lower base 12 range chart. I traded 60 in the 12 range chart. Those are the two that I like to use paired together. But whatever works for you, okay, whatever works for you. So this is just how I do it. I'm not telling anyone to trade like I do, but I've been showing you. Have a, having a great strategy is key to also being successful if you're looking to trade the futures and grow a small account. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so now let's get down to the, to the last part. All right, talking about um, starting capital. This is the part that people really want to hear it for some reason. How much money do I need? Can I trade with $400? Can I trade with $500? Can I trade with $1,000? $2,500? Yes, okay? The beautiful thing about trading futures is that uh, you can trade the e minis if you trade the indices or indexes, uh, and you can you can trade uh, the micros. Now, if you're someone that has is limited to the amount of money that you actually have as far as capital, and you're using your own funds to do so, um, micros I always say is the best way to start off because you can simply start off with just say a minimum of 400 bucks, okay, to get into trading futures. With micros, I'm gonna show you here with the broker I use again. Um, most brokers are similar too, as far as when it comes to the actual uh, day trading margins. Uh, some, some, some may be slightly higher or lower, but just an example. I'm not telling anyone to use AMP futures um, again because you know there's some that some that it, it all boils down to fees. Okay, uh, everybody wants to also minimize the amount of of costs as well because that's a big thing. But um, for me, AMP has been I've been using them for since almost the beginning, since I well, definitely since the beginning, since I started. Um, and really haven't looked on the outside, not to say I won't ever do that, but I'm just saying that I'm just using an example. So just don't really think about in terms of the broker I'm using. Choose one that works for you uh, according to what also what platform are you using? Do you want to use? Do you want to use TradeVate? Do you, you want to use Think or Swim? Do you want to use Sierra Charts? Do you want to use, um, you know, a trade station? Whatever works for you, okay? So let's talk about this right now. I'm just going to show you an example. When it comes to margins, um, you see where I had that 10 times rule. I talk about this because I believe personally that it's the best way to actually go about um, securing, or, or I should say securing, having the right amount of capital to start with. 10 times the margin. So, for example, the micro e-mini S&P futures, it, it's, uh, you have to have a, a minimum of $40 per contract to trade. That means each contract, you have to have a minimum of $40 to trade. So, if I was interested in trading one contract, I'm just hypothetically speaking, my rule of thumb is that I like to have 10 times the margin. So 10 times 40 is what? That's 400 bucks, correct? So, and that's per contract that I'm looking to trade. Some people may think that's silly, but I'm telling you that when you start doing this enough, you'll see how quickly and you don't know how to trade, how quickly you will lose some money if you don't know how to trade correctly. So secure, and the reason why I'm saying this and having using a 10 times rule is that Let's say you go in there with, you know, um, $400 and you start over, over trading, not over trading, leveraging too much. You're going to fall within that threshold and you're not going to be able to trade much. You want to be able to, if you have a losing trade, be able to sustainably have enough to be able to get back into the market and trade again, live to see another trade. So have it that. 10 times the rule. I'm not saying that you can't take $400 and trade too many con, I mean, excuse me, micro contracts. Okay. All right. You can definitely possibly do so if you know how to trade correctly. But scaling is all about having the right amount of money in your trading account to be able to do so, okay? So for example, I'm gonna show you. Yes, micros 400 to $1,000, you can definitely trade. It will take you more time to build a small account trading micros, but again, if you know how to consistently trade and are profitable and you have a good trading plan and a good strategy to trade, you will see growth on that account or in that account over time. With trading, we you should never think about and use trading as a means to get rich overnight. It doesn't happen that way. It happens in increments in time, but it also happens with according to how much money you have uh, to trade with. So, example here, I'm going to show you just the um, the the with the broker I use. I use AMP. Please take don't don't place any emphasis on that. I'm just showing you that when it comes to the micro e mini futures, day trading margin forty dollars a contract. Okay. Uh, micro e mini NASDAQ, $100. If you want to do the Dow, $50. The Russell, $50. So I would personally have that 10 times rule put into effect. So if I was looking to trade, say, for example, the uh, e mini SP, uh, the micro version of it, 
you know, $40 a contract, so I want to have $400 at least. And that's a good starting point to trade uh, the E-mini futures micro side, okay? So just wanted to show you that. And then as you go down, you have various other contracts. Again, uh, remember what I told you about the different markets you can trade, or the uh, different assets that you can trade uh, within futures. You have the currencies. Um, you have, well, in a, you have commodities is what I'm trying to say as well. And then the financials. So there are opportunities there in which you can actually, uh, uh trade different markets. Okay. So, uh, let's take a look here when it comes to the e-minis, they are, they require more money. Okay. Let me bring this back over more money. So if you're interested in trading, say for ex example, the e-mini S and P 500, which is the e ES there's a difference in symbol there. The micro is MES. The ES is ES. Then you see how it's 10 times larger than the micro. So $400. So for me, the 10 times rule would be $4,000, okay, for each contract. But again, I just have that rule in play for, for my sake. I'm not saying you can't trade two contracts or three contracts if you have $4,000 you're starting off with. But just be careful because if you do not have a solid trading plan and strategy, you will watch that money dwindle down real quick. Let me touch on this as well. A lot of people, what they do is they will take their lunch money, meaning they'll take their mortgage money, their car note money, or their bill money to pay utilities with, or whatever, their child care money. Don't do that. If you don't have the right amount of capital to start with that you can put away in savings and save it just to put into your brokerage account alone, meaning taking save money that you put away just for trading, okay, then do not start trading. You do not want to run into the issue to where you are putting your family into a bad situation because you spent the mortgage money, okay? And now you're out on the street. So please don't do that. Only trade with money that you are, um, that you can possibly lose with, okay? And, and if you lose, that you're comfortable in knowing, nobody feels comfortable losing money, but you have to, at the end of the day, know that trading is risky. So if you do lose, it's not the mortgage money, it's not the childcare money, it's not the food money, the bill money, it's money that you have lost and you're able to chop up and move on and then start saving money up again to give it, you know, to see it another day. What happens with most people is that once they lose a significant or a certain amount of money, um, is a they want to start pointing fingers because somebody showed them something that don't work and typically speaking that's not the truth the truth of the matter is is that you don't know how to do it that you don't know how to trade correctly so that's why i'm showing you different things and what you really need to learn to put you on the right path or understand to put you on the right path uh and, and showing you how i how i uh trade myself but i'm not telling anyone to trade like me okay uh or use a strategy i do so whatever works for you find a means of a strategy stick with it if it works and it's making you money but again, do not use money that you are that you can't afford to lose. Okay, I put it like that. Simply put. All right. So when it comes to leverage, leveraging or position sizing, again, that's all tied back to the amount of capital that you have to trade with. How many contracts are you looking to, to, to trade? Okay, one, two. But again, like I said, if you're trading them right micros, which I re highly recommend anyone who's starting off, and even if you have larger size capital. Try the micros to see and prove to yourself once you perfect it, uh, structure, uh, price action, have a solid trading plan, you have a nice strategy, and you're consistent with it by doing demoing or, or, and back testing and, and simulation, and you show, proving to yourself that you can do so, give it a try, try, try with the micros, start off there, and leverage small amounts first, okay, because you don't want to sit, you know, be blowing your money that, you, you know, you, you're trading with, okay, you don't want to blow your own capital, trust me, I've seen people do this time and time again, it only takes one or two times to blow through some money and then you're done. That taste of wanting to trade may never come back again. So leverage small uh, and, 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 you know, trade when it comes to the number of contracts or lots you want to trade, trade accordingly. That's why I put the 10 times rule in, uh, uh, into effect for myself. Okay. That meaning for, if I'm trading micros for every con for every $400 I have, I'll trade one, one contract. I'm not telling anyone not to trade two or three contracts if they want to do so with the micros with 400 or $500. It's up to you. I'm not here to tell anyone how to trade. I'm just telling you that how to safe net yourself, protect yourself, security for measures and things of that nature to help, um, not incur much drawdown in a sense and also as well as don't lose as much so that you live to see another trade leverage right and, and, and put on the right uh have the right position size and when you when you're looking to trade okay uh when it comes to risk and reward this is a a, a heavy topic uh people ask me too uh, what do you look for one to one you know two to one three to one it depends it depends on a structure it depends on um the price action when the market gets back to it you know how much area do i have to trade um it, when people ask this question 
I feel as if, and I know that they really don't know how to uh, read market structure and price action because if they did, then they would be simply be able to understand and look at the chart and say, okay, I see this clearance. I see this area. I see this possibility for the market to go back to a certain high, just like I showed you in that, that um, last example. That demand was a beautiful trade setup. Price moved back to it, and you could tell by where it wants to go, okay? Beautiful demand set up off the higher base chart, and there was really nothing that was going to really stop it on its, you know, when it got back down there, uh, wanting to test higher areas, and that's what it did. But again, you have to know, the more, I'm going to say this, the more you spend time putting on one-to-one -one positions, they work out beautiful, right? Okay, and you may take two or three of those, but the more, the more you do that, um, then you're probably going at some point, let's say you take three trades a day, you may lose one. Or four trades a day, you may lose one or possibly even two. What I like to do is focus on bigger moves. And that's why I like to use those pair charts when, I come to, when I'm talking about the um, my higher time frame 60 range. And then looking for a more precise entry on my 12 range chart. By doing so and marking up higher base or higher time frame zones, then I'm looking for bigger movements that give me more so a two to three or I mean, excuse me, a, um, two to three, a two to one or a three to one or more. OK, that trade that, you, that that I showed you off of that demand area, that was way more than a three to one. OK, but you just have to be able to to know how to correctly trade it. And I talk about a strategy that I use um, that allows you to trail behind the market as it's moving. OK, watch the videos, guys. I'm telling you, this stuff is powerful stuff that I, I talk about. Uh, and the strategy in which I use, again, I'm not telling anyone to trade like me, but I'm showing you and explaining to you, this is my way, if I was anyone out there, how to really spend some time um, understanding certain things and concepts and, and what to really do if you're looking to sm grow your small, a small account. I don't have much money to trade with, but I'm looking to really, I want to trade and I don't want to really um, risk a, a whole lot. So this is a great way I'm giving you like the layout the floor plan of what to really kind of take a look into. All right. So risk to reward, the more you spend in the market looking for one-to-ones, there's going to be a possibility you're probably going to lose a trade or two or whatever the case is. Taking one trade or two trades where you can get a two-to-one or three-to-one is beautiful because then you don't have to trade. You, you, you've you met the uh, goal you're looking for um, each day, your profit goal, and then you're done. So let's take a look at an example of what I just showed you on that demand setup. I'm going to wrap this up right now. So I'm going to minimize this right quick. Um, and we're looking at the 12 range chart and which is, was the entry chart in which we took the trade. Well, we would have trade. This is an example taking a trade from. So, and this was a beautiful de demand setup, by the way, but I was recording this video. But, uh, what I want you to see here is this right, right here. So take a look here when we have, you know, we're looking at the, um, that example I just showed you when it comes to risk and reward, you know, looking at, for example, a one-to-one, -one, you can see right here. Where I would have gotten to that trade at, or conservative wise, which I, you know, discuss with, with a lot of traders, we talk about the break and close of a candle in the opposite direction off of a, um, in this case here, a demand zone on a lower base chart. Okay. Uh, we then went through the strategy and talked about that. But as an example here, so the, the break and close would have been above here, say at 296 and, a, and three quarters, right? All right. And once we do that, we get to the trade going along. All right. So you have to understand where to place your stop at. Well, my stop would be at the back end here at 288 and three quarters. Maybe give myself a few ticks, breathing room. I'll talk about that because uh, what they like to do is they like to come back and test those areas because they are they know most times people are getting into trades right here in this zone in this area here. So if you did that and it came back to this area here, tick the tick, uh, you would have got stopped out. So give yourself a little breathing room. Well, this is eight points right here from the point of entry. OK, you can see where I would place a stop at. It never comes back to that area. It just runs up to the upside and goes all the way up there. Um, like I explained to what was it at three, 346. Correct. So this is way more than a, a, a two to one, three to one, four to one, whatever the case is. This goes up there. All right. But again, this is all about looking at the structure and price action, to determine how much room do I have to take it and where can I take it to? So getting a one to one was very easy here. We're picking up eight points and, and risking eight. Uh, the next opportunity where you can say, say, okay, I want a two to one, it would be around 312. Okay. You're risking eight to pick up, um, 16 points right there. Okay. And then at three to one, you are, uh, basically risking eight to pick up 24 points right there. You know, you, and it still goes way more than that. It goes up to what, uh, 26 more points up to the upside, all the way up to 346. Okay. So there's a lot of potential in this move right here. And this is the reason why I explain and talk about the strategy and how I trade it and what I look for 
uh, and I put place emphasis around structure and price action because it's key. But again, the more you spend time looking for one to one setups um, and, and you may come out 100% uh, 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 most days and sometimes you may take a losing trade. But you just have to know when to stop while you're ahead and don't lose those profits that you when you're up. So a lot of times looking for a two to one or three, three to one. Yeah, they're harder to do, but you have to pay close attention to market structure and price action. If you can pick up a two or three to one, then I would just, you know, me, I'm going to be done for the day because I didn't pick up enough pro uh, profit for the day. All right. And the bottom part that I have right here was says prop firm jumpstart. Now, I don't trade prop firms. I never have. When I first started trading, I didn't know anything about prop firms. They didn't, I don't even believe they even existed 13 years ago. And if they did, it wasn't something that was, you know, highly talked about. But today there are, there's a bunch of them. Um, you know, and I, and I see people trading various ones or hear them talk about, say, for example, Apex or, or Top Step. Um, and some other ones out there but anyways or my funded futures or something like that i'm not sure guys and i don't know all the ends and the details when it comes to surrounding them but there are opportunities in which that people turn to the prop firms because maybe they don't want to trade with or they don't have they're limited within, within a certain amount of capital what, what i would say that if you can do so and you can pass the evaluations is definitely um uh, pass them make your money Take your withdrawals and start your own personal funded account. All right. And maybe you want to continue doing the prop firm thing. Um, I don't know how long they'll be around, but if you can take take that advantage or get that advantage or, or to where you can take a, a few uh, withdrawals out, you know, two here, three here, four here, whatever the case is, and getting payments paid out, then build your personal account up. All right. Uh, and that way, if you really take a look at it and think about it, you not you haven't even used anybody else's capital. I mean, you haven't used your own capital. You've really taken the time to prove it to yourself because if you can pass the prop, prop, prop firm evaluations and you're sitting out here and, you, and you're withdrawing, pulling money out, then you've already proven yourself consistency. And now you know definitely sure you can trade with your own money. So basically, if you've cashed out, pulled money out of, out of the market and that wasn't even yours. So if you could do that, then it's a great thing uh, to be able to do so. But I would definitely recommend um, starting your own personal account. But that's all I have today. That's all I want, really want to, sh to share with you. This is definitely something that's definitely possible. Trading is not a gimmick. It's a business. It's all I want you put into it. How much time, how much energy, how much effort do you spend into um, educating yourself? And that's the reason why I created this channel because I want to see people become profitable as well. Now, if you're interested in becoming an elite member, because people ask me that, oh, what, what, do I, what do you receive? You receive the trade breakdowns in the video playlist um, as well as some smaller perks that um, come with you know, the, the YouTube tier membership program. What you're doing is supporting me as a content creator by providing great valuable information. But the trade breakdown is one thing that you receive. Um, and let me stop right here and tell you, the price or the cost is $6.99 a month. That is it. That's all it costs. But you receive so much valuable information. And you don't have to take it from me. You can ask some of the members of part of the Discord and they'll tell you they've learned educate themselves and grab so much understanding by simply taking a look at the trade breakdowns because uh, that's where I spend time in breaking down the trade setups. I'll walk you through the process of what I was thinking as if you're sitting right next to me and explain to you why I took that trade. You know, where I'm looking to take profit at, where would I place my stop at. There's tons of those uh, type trade videos on the private side, but if you're looking to become an elite channel supporter or elite channel member, Simply click on the link down in the description portion of the video, right below the Discord link. By the way, the Discord is free if you're looking or interested in joining. Right below the, the Discord link, there's one that says uh, become an elite member. Click on that. Two tiers will pop up, okay? Make sure to scroll down and choose the one that says elite channel supporter or may say elite channel member for $6.99 and you'll gain access to the trade breakdowns in the video playlist, okay? So I just want to put that out there because people ask me that on the daily. But I appreciate everyone tuning in. I know this video was kind of lengthy, but I wanted to create something that was uh, in discussion of that would be very beneficial to so many people out there. If you're not a current subscriber, please take the time to sub by clicking on the subscribe button down below. Make sure to turn on all your post notifications so you never miss one of the uploads. And last but not least, if you found um, valuable information within this video, please drop a like on the video. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.